With a name like Black Pits, you might expect this peated Irish whiskey to have a really intense character, but it's actually got some surprising fruity notes. Stick around and I'll give you the rundown. Welcome back to the channel, my name is Matt, I'm a whiskey nerd, and this is the Teeling Black Pits Peated Irish Single Malt. Let me get it into the glass and I'll tell you a bit more about it. Now, peated Irish whiskies used to be pretty uncommon, but nowadays they're actually getting much more common. So before, your only choice really was Connemara or maybe some special edition whiskies, but now we've got the Connemara, obviously the classic peated Irish single malt, you've got the Teeling Black Pits peated Irish single malt, and you've got some peated blends coming out from Kilbegan and from some other distilleries. So peated Irish whiskies is no longer a thing of the past, and I think they're here to stay. And that's a good thing, because traditionally, Irish whiskey would have been peated in much the same way as Scotch whiskey. So Irish whiskey, you'd be able to combine that kind of light, sweet, fruitiness with the kind of deep bite of smoke and you'll be able to get some really clever notes so that's why I'm really glad Teeling brought this whiskey back, the Teeling Black Pits. It gets its name from the Black Pits area which is the area around the Teeling distillery. So this area, the Black Pits area, would have been home to a bunch of malting houses. These are where they would have taken regular raw barley and then malted it into malted barley which is what you use to make single malt whiskey. So this is kind of just like a hearkening back, a kind of a, a nod to the history of the area and the history of the places that would have made malted barley, particularly peated malted barley. And this barley in this whiskey actually started off as a fairly heavily peated barley. So in terms of if you're a nerd, the uh, phenols, the parts per million of the phenols, which are these peaty smoky notes, was originally 55 parts per million, which is a fairly high level of peat smoke to be in the whiskey and it will give you a really strong character. However, they distilled it three times. So Scotch whiskey normally distilled two times, Irish whiskey normally distilled three times. So when you triple distill the whiskey, you kind of concentrate some of the flavors you want and you strip out some of the flavors you don't. This means that when it was distilled three times, the, pe the phenols parts per million went from 55 down to 15. So it got kind of all those sharp, kind of maybe medicinal notes from the smoke were taken out and just leaves you with that kind of more subtle kind of barbecue campfire kind of smoky vibe. And that's definitely what Teeling were going for because this whiskey was aged in bourbon and Sauternes white wine casks. And I don't mean it was finished in those white wine casks, I mean it was aged in white wine casks. So when they made the whiskey, two thirds of the whiskey went into ex bourbon barrels to give you the classic kind of vanilla, caramel, butterscotch kind of sweetness, and one third of the whiskey went into Sauternes white wine casks. This gives you a kind of nice, light, tropical fruits, kind of bright, sweet apple, maybe grape, maybe some pineapple notes that come into the whiskey. And so then when they were aged enough, they married those back together, giving you a really nice, rich depth of sweetness and depth of fruitiness into the whiskey and I think that's definitely what they were going for when they distilled it three times to bring that level of peat down. They don't say how long the whiskey spent in those barrels so it's kind of hard to guess at what age the whiskey is. I mean it has to be at least three years old but it's hard to tell how old the whiskey actually is. I mean it's fairly light in colour but Teeling do bottle at 46% and they don't add any caramel colouring to it. So this is what the whiskey would look like coming out of the barrels. It's hard to tell because some distilleries will add caramel colouring to a much younger whiskey to make it seem older, but Teeling kind of show it as it is, so it's hard to tell exactly how old the whiskey is. And that's enough talking, let's get into the nose and see if they were able to deliver a really nice fruity whiskey. Cheers. Mmm. Okay. Definitely you can tell there's peatiness to it. There's definitely that smoke. It's quite subtle. It's almost if it's far away. And that's kind of wrapping around this core of like apples, maybe some grape notes, really, really fruity whiskey. Yeah, it's got this really nice depth of fruitiness to the whiskey. That's probably coming from not only the barley they were using, but also those Sauternes wine casks. It's got a really nice fruitiness. And then that's kind of layered on top of some kind of caramel, maybe some butterscotch sweetness. Mm, very nice and again you got this wrapper of smoke kind of completing everything so mm, it's kind of like um, kind of like a savory smoke like I did say it'd be kind of like a barbecue smoke like a campfire smoke and it's definitely like that 
it wouldn't be like that sharp kind of attack of smoke you get in some whiskies. It's much more kind of gentle, kind of like a barbecue in a distance. So you get this nice little bit of um, almost like a savory, like an umami kind of taste coming off it. But it's just nice and it's not overpowering in any one direction. Mm, there's also maybe a little bit of saltiness, like um, if you're near the sea and you get the salt air, not like a brine, again, it's not sharp, it's just like a light bit of saltiness coming through. Mm, so I think it's time I go in for the palate and see how those flavors change. Okay, up front, fruitiness, sweet, bright, apples, honey, stuff like that. But then like a second later, you get the wrapper of smoke again. Quite like the nose, you get that nice deep smoke kind of surrounding everything. After you take that first initial sip, you also get a bit of spiciness coming through the mid palate, kind of like a clove, not like a cinnamon, like that kind of more earthy spice you get from a clove. And then you get this kind of lemon zest coming through in the mid palate and just a nice rich kind of carrying through sweetness, fruitiness and smokiness coming through the entire palate. So we're going to go in again and see what else I can find. There's definitely one note that I consistently get on this whiskey. So I've had this whiskey a few times and I always get this kind of flavor of like a grilled pineapple, like a barbecued pineapple. Like if you took some chunks of pineapple and you cook them over a barbecue, over that charcoal smoke, and then you taste it. That's what I always get in the mid palate on this whiskey. Like after you get the fruitiness, after you get the smoke, when those two kind of meld together, you get this kind of grilled charcoal pineapple flavor. So it's got this nice kind of core sweetness, a bit of sharpness coming through, but also this really nice wrapper of deep smoke around that fruitiness. And then, like I said, when it moves into the end of the palate, you get this nice, sharp kind of lemon zest. Not like in a bad way, it's not sharp in like an overpowering way. It's just a nice, refreshing bit of lemon zest. So I'm going to go in for the finish and see how all those flavors fade. Cheers. Okay, like I said, fruitiness, then you get the smoke, then you get the kind of grilled pineapple, then you get some, some lemon zest, but also I'm getting like a kind of a caramel, and butterscotch. Definitely as you move towards into the finish, the pineapple is kind of fading away and being left more with like a caramel but also with that saltiness from the nose as I was breathing it. Almost like a salted caramel, taking that butterscotch, adding a bit of salt, nice and kind of rich, sweet, but with a touch of savouriness still about it. And then just a nice lingering bit of smoke. Like it's a fairly complex finish it's also relatively short, like it's not a particularly long finish. Like I think I'm gonna taste the smoke on this whiskey a lot longer than I'll taste the other notes, but it is not a particularly like lingering or complex finish. It's just a nice bit of a finish, has a bit of an evolution, bit of new tastes coming through, leaves you wanting more. And at 46% ABV, that's kind of what you'd be expecting. You wouldn't be expecting it to have this huge st showstopper of a finish, but also you wouldn't be expecting it to just fall flat. So I think in that regard it does deliver kind of what I'd be expecting out of a 46% whiskey. A bit of complexity, a bit of a finish, but nothing that's going to just blow your mind. As peated Irish whiskies go, this is a very good one. I mean, as I said, there aren't many kind of expressions of peated Irish whiskey on the market. Teeling are good in that they've made this one their core line, so it should be fairly available. It should be available pretty much anywhere. It's a little bit more expensive than the regular kind of blended whiskey, but I think it's in line with the price for their regular single malt or their single grain whiskey. So it's not overly expensive, and I think it does deliver for the price what it sets out to deliver. All in all, if you're a fan of peated whiskeys, but sometimes you find that the kind of medicinal, kind of sharp, acrid qualities you get in a heavily peated whiskey are too overpowering, but you do like the kind of savory nature, the salty nature you get from those heavily peated whiskies, this might be good for you because then it does strip out those harsher notes and leaves you with those more savory, umami, kind of salty notes. So I think I really like this. It's for me, I do like a bit of peat in my whiskey. I don't like overpoweringly strong peat. So I think this is one I'm definitely gonna be keeping on my shelf and when I empty the bottle, I'll probably be refilling it. I think that's all there is to say about the Teeling Blackbits whiskey. I do like it, I do enjoy it, I'm definitely going to keep on enjoying it. 
I put out whiskey reviews every Wednesday and cocktail recipes every Friday. So if you want to see more like this, you know what you need to do. You need to scroll down, hit that thumbs up button, hit that subscribe button, and I will see you next time. Slaunch it.